So last week, I characterized Donald Trump's first week as president as a complete disaster. Now, with everything, I mean, there's always an adjustment period. So you know what they say about your first day on the job. The first day is always the hardest, and then it gradually gets better. But in this case, Donald Trump had a pretty rough week. However, there was no improvement during the second week. In fact, I would argue that his second week was more of a disaster than his first week. I mean, it was just a catastrophe. So I'm going to give you a rundown as to why I think Donald Trump's second week went worse than the first. But before I even get to that, I can't not start out by talking about how President Trump completely embarrassed himself at a Black History Month listening session, and he tried to make it about him. Last month, we celebrated the life of the Reverend Martin Luther King. Jr., whose incredible example is unique in American history. You read all about Dr. Martin Luther King uh, a week ago when uh, somebody said, I took the statue out of my office. And it turned out that that was fake news. <laughs> I swear to God, Donald Trump is the presidential equivalent of Michael Scott from The Office. Now, he also took a moment to commend the African Americans around the world. We honor the tremendous history of the African Americans throughout our country, throughout the world, if you really think about it, right? Thank God somebody is finally acknowledging the work that African Americans in Italy are doing and African Americans in South Africa are doing. <laughs> Despite that, there's some really important things that happened during this week, namely the constitutional crisis that he triggered in the second week by trying to issue a Muslim ban from countries that were currently bombing. And this basically led to a complete disaster. We had nationwide protests. So obviously, if you try to implement an unconstitutional Muslim ban unilaterally by executive order, that's going to lead to some backlash. And people uh, within government who refuse to comply, like Sally Yates, well, he just fired. So as it stands now, this case is currently pending. Now, this isn't the only case that President Trump is currently involved with. So according to New York Daily News, President Trump has been sued dozens of times during his first days in the White House for a wide array of reasons, from his alleged unethical business interests to his controversial travel ban on seven Muslim-majority countries. As of Wednesday morning, Trump has been named in more than 50 federal lawsuits according to court records. Now, to be completely fair to President Trump, it's not unusual for presidents to be named in lawsuits when they first get into office, but by comparison, President Obama was only named in 11 different lawsuits, whereas President Trump is already named in 50 in his first two weeks. That is a lot, and it's because of things that Donald Trump is doing. His unconstitutional Muslim ban. It's because of the plethora of conflicts of interest. Now, besides this, there's also a lot more bad news for President Trump. He literally has the worst approval rating of any new president since we started keeping track of approval ratings 60 years ago, with just 45% of citizens approving of the job he's doing. Also, there's a substantial impeachment movement that's looming over his head. Now, this movement managed to acquire more than 500,000 signatures, which is significant. And four in 10 voters now support his impeachment, according to public policy polling. Now, in spite of all of this bad news, President Trump is already raising money for his 2020 re-election bid. You are really gone, for real. Now, the question is, why the hell is he so unpopular, and what the hell is he doing? Well, I mean, besides the unconstitutional Muslim ban and the numerous conflicts of interest, he's proving to be a gigantic hypocrite because he's doing things that he criticized Obama for. So, for example, he implied that Obama shouldn't be taking time off of golf when there's other crises occurring across the country. Meanwhile, he's already planning to take a vacation after just two weeks in office. But I think the fact that he's proving to be a gigantic hypocrite it's, it's not really surprising to most people, and it's also less important. What really is important is the fact that the policies that he's choosing to implement is having a real-world impact uh, that's negative. Now, when it comes to the housing market, Trump's administration decided to stop President Obama's annual insurance premium cut, which was beneficial because it would have decreased monthly payments for thousands of new lower-income borrowers. Total mortgage applications fell 3.2% on a seasonally adjusted basis from the previous week, according to Mortgage Bankers Association. Volume was 18% lower than the same week one year ago. This is called cause and effect. If you make it more difficult for people to afford loans, and if you make them less affordable, then 
then people are less likely to want to buy houses, and this will impact the housing industry and the housing market negatively. Good job, Trump. Now, second of all, he signed an arbitrary executive order that requires two regulations to be rescinded every time a new one is signed into law. And the biggest issue that I have with this is it just applies to all regulations across the board. There's no nuance. So if the Food and Drug Administration, for example, wants to ban the use of a particular ingredient that a new study finds to be harmful, well, then the FDA would have to search for two other regulations to cut. But that means that two other necessary regulations will be on the chopping block that might be more harmful. So in other words, this dissuades federal agencies from coming up with new regulations. Now look, I'm a reasonable person. I can probably agree with the fact that there are many regulations that are unnecessary, but you don't treat all regulations the same and you certainly don't treat all regulatory agencies the same. That's irrational. That's stupid. I mean, when it comes to the FDA, I don't care how many regulations are on the book. I care that our food is thoroughly regulated and is safe for us to consume consume. Regulations just aren't unequivocally bad. I want there to be regulations that ensure that our drinking water is clean. I want there to be regulations on Wall Street so that way they can't gamble with our money and then crash the economy. If you're Donald Trump though, there's just no room for nuance. So those are some of the harmful domestic policies that he's implemented, but surprisingly, I will give him credit where credit is due. He chose to continue a 2014 executive order by President Obama that bars discrimination against LGBT people that are working for companies with federal contracts. So I think that this is a smart move, although he's doing other things that are harmful to the LGBT community. And I'll talk about that in a different segment. But overall, when you look at all of his domestic policies, besides the TPP and trying to protect LGBT workers that are working for companies with federal contracts, his domestic policies have been a catastrophe thus far, but that's just his domestic policies. Let's talk about his foreign policies. So during a military raid in Yemen, the US managed to kill 14 Al-Qaeda fighters. However, simultaneously, they managed to kill 30 civilians in the process, including 10 women and some children, namely Nora Alalaki. Now, Nora Alalaki's father was assassinated by the CIA under the directive of President Obama. Now, this is problematic because Anwar Alalaki was an American citizen. Now, Anwar's son, Abdurrahman al-Awlaki, who's also Nora's older brother, of course, was killed in a drone strike with his cousin. So between President Obama and President Trump, we've completely wiped out this family. It's heartbreaking. And the reason why this whole military raid was just a complete clusterfuck was because Donald Trump, according to reports, ordered this raid without a sufficient amount of intelligence. You can't do that. You can't take military action without a sufficient amount of intelligence. Now, additionally, when it comes to international policy, Myron Ebel, who was the former EPA advisor to Donald Trump, claims that we will be pulling out of the Paris Climate Agreement within days. Now, it's a little bit more difficult than that. Donald Trump can't just unilaterally pull out of the Paris Climate Agreement because we're bound for four years. But what President Trump can do is sign an executive order that states that we are intending to pull out as soon as that four-year period is up. That's a problem. Climate change is a problem. And look, here's the thing about the Paris Climate Agreement. It doesn't go far enough. It's very weak to begin with. It lacks teeth. So, Something is better than nothing, but they're saying we don't want anything. We don't want any any policy, any treaty that could potentially at least ameliorate climate change a little bit. They don't want that. So Donald Trump's second week between the Muslim ban, between his disastrous military raid, between his horrible, the multitude of domestic policies that just backfired immediately, it's been a catastrophe. So if his first week was bad and his second week was worse... Good Lord, let's hope that we get a break in the third week. Please, just go on vacation. I know that that makes him a hypocrite, but the less that Donald Trump is doing at this point, I think the better we'll all be. Support this podcast by joining the independent progressive media revolution today at humanistreport.com.